guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Today's question, can you use a dual plane intake manifold on a blow through application? And how well does it work? In this video, I'm going to show you how well a dual plane intake manifold like this one works on a blow through application. First, we've got a Ford supercharged and turbocharged. Now we've got an LS motor supercharged dual plane intake. Do they work? Let's find out. To illustrate that dual plane manifolds do work in blow through applications, and I've used them many, many times, I'm going to give you two examples starting first with this small block Ford. With this Ford started out with a production late model five liter block, but it was an increased displacement. We made a little stroker out of it by adding a 3.25 inch stroker crank. We had a set of 5.4 inch forge rods and a set of forge dish, dish pistons with valve reliefs in them. Although we really didn't need the valve reliefs for this combination because we ran such a mild camshaft in it. The camshaft that we installed in this 327 inch stroker was a Comp Extreme Energy 266 cam, which offered a 544 or 555 lift split, a 216, 224 degree duration split, and 112 degree lobe separation angle. It was one step down from the 274 cam that we run in a lot of stuff. Topping off this 327 inch stroker was a set of Edelbrock Victor Jr. as cast heads with no modifications to them. We did change the valve springs on them, if I remember right, just so that we could get the thing to RPM properly. We ran the intake manifold that we're using for this test was an Edelbrock RPM air gap, kind of the go-to dual plane intake manifold that you use on a performance application. We ran a blow through a Mighty Demon carburetor enclosed in the Edelbrock carburetor, uh, carburetor enclosure. Now you could also run this as a bonnet. We've run the CSU 850 blow through carburetor on a lot of stuff, but in this case we had the Vortec or Paxton enclosure and enclosed it inside so everything was pressurized evenly. That also works very well. We had an MSD distributor and a set of inch and three quarter long tube, uh, inch and five eighths rather, um, long tube hooker headers for a Fox chassis application. The combination worked very well. We first ran it naturally aspirated before we added the Paxton. It was a Novi 1200 supercharger, but run, when this thing was NA, it made 391 or two horsepower. Yeah, 391.9, so we'll call it 392 horsepower and 386 foot-pounds of torque. Again, fairly mild, good stroker combination, lots of torque. The fact that the torque and horsepower peak numbers were very similar shows you that it's still a fairly mild combination, especially with this many cubic inches. The 266 cam is plenty mild and certainly drivable. But let's see what happened when we added boost. We added a Paxton Novi 1200 blowing through the enclosure with no intercooler on it, just blowing through the carburetor. And we ran a peak boost of about nine pounds on this one. <clears throat> and as you can see in kind of typical centrifugal supercharged fashion, this thing had a rising power curve and a rising boost curve. We saw this thing may eventually made over 600 horsepower, 617 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 560 foot-pounds, 559.8 to be exact. And there was more power to be had because we were we we had a lot of other pulleys that we could have run. And this wasn't designed, actually, this particular test wasn't designed to try to maximize the power output of this particular combination. What it was designed to do is we also ran this thing with a turbo, a single turbo, a, a one from HP Performance, and then also a root supercharger to demonstrate the differences between all those. And that video is up. You can check that out where I compared all the different forms of forced induction. But it goes to show you that we ran this thing with a blow through with a Paxton supercharger and the carburetor enclosure on the dual plane manifold and the dual plane manifold works just fine under boost. You don't have to have a single plane common plenum plen manifold on a blow through application. And as I said before, this thing would work equally well if we were set up with fuel injection on the dual plane manifold. And to further prove this point, we didn't just do this with a blow through supercharger. We also did it, we also ran, as I mentioned, a single turbo on it. And the single turbo has a lot more average uh, boost production and a lot more average power production. 
and it, it blew through the same enclosure and carburetor that we used with the Paxton. So even with a turbo, it doesn't really matter what the forced induction is. I just wanted to show you that all of these forms of forced induction on a blow-through application with a dual-plane intake manifold work equally well. So now let's take a look. Now that we've taken a look at the Ford, let's show what happened when we ran a similar test on an LS. The next test motor was actually an LS, and this was a 4.8 liter. Now, this was a, our modified test motor that we've run on lots and lots of things. It was a 4.8 liter. It was a stock block, stock crank, stock Gen 4 rods, and a set of forged JE pistons. Very small dome so that we could get the compression up a little bit on these. And we had uh, extra ring gap in it because we ran boost turbos and blowers and all kinds of things on this combination. For this test... The 4.8 liter was topped with a set of uh, small uh, TFS 205 heads, they're, they're Gen X 205 heads, very good heads for the, these small bore motors like the 4.8 and 5.3. We had uh, an LJMS uh, BTR Stage 1 blower cam, which was not ideal for this particular test because it was designed actually for a roots blower. And not that every cam isn't a turbo or blower or nitrous cam. It's just that this thing offered a 610, 586 lift split, a 223, 238 degree duration split, and a very wide 120 degree lobe separation angle. What that means is it was going to be really soft down low, which it would be anyway with a 4.8 more than likely. But with that wide LSA, it's definitely going to be soft down low. And it's going to be better on the top. And we ran this thing all the way out to 7,000. But in my opinion, that this would not be my choice of camshaft. It just happened to be what was in here for our test. And we ran this thing with a Performer RPM intake manifold and a 750 uh, Holly carburetor on here to run at NA. Then we would step up to the CSU blow-through carburetor. We ran this thing because it was carbureted with an MSD ignition, which we were able to control the timing with, and, and obviously we controlled the, the fuel supply with jetting. So when we ran this thing, we ran it with a set of uh, inch and three-quarter long tube headers, so equipped our naturally aspirated 4.8 liter, produced right at 440 horsepower, and peak torque checked in at 352 foot-pounds. You can see it was fairly flat above 325 for the whole range, running it from 3,500 to 7,000 essentially. And here's what happened after we installed the Vortex supercharger and the blow-through carburetor. This was at a peak boost of over 15 and a half pounds, 15.8. It started out at about 4.3 pounds down low. Since centrifugal supercharger fashion had a rising boost curve, as I said, it went from 4.3 to 15.8 pounds. This thing made 800 horsepower out at 6,900 RPM and was obviously still climbing fairly rapidly. But it goes to show you again, the dual plane manifold worked NA and it also worked under boost as we would expect it to because the, the intake manifold works very well. We're gonna take a look in just a second on what happened to the air fuel distribution because we logged 802s on this particular combination. But again, Dual plane intake manifold, single plane intake manifold, even all of the EFI manifolds, they're all going to work under boost and they're actually going to do very similar things that they did in A and we'll see in the air fuel curves that something different did happen once we added boost. This particular Vortec for the guys that want to know, let's take a look. I think that this was a T trim. It was a TI trim. We also had an air to water intercooler on it. And as I said, we had our blow through carburetor on there. We had a, I think it was a seven and a half inch, yeah, seven and a half inch ATI dampener. So the seven and a half inch crank pulley and a 3.8 inch blower pulley to produce this kind of boost and this kind of power on this combination. So now that we've taken a look at what happened and we know that the intake manifold works, let's take a quick look at what happened with the air fuel curves when we were running this thing NA and then what happens after we added boost. Before we take a look at what happened in the individual cylinders, here is what happened to the air fuel ratios running at naturally aspirated in blue, and then what happened to the air fuel curve after we added boost and the blow through carburetor. You can see they have kind of similar trends here. It started out rich down low in the very high 11s and low 12s on the naturally aspirated motor and rose to 
the leanest part was 11.1 or 13.1 or, or air fuel. And this is kind of typical for a carburetor. We can very rarely do we ever get it so that it's nice and flat and even all the way across. A similar thing happened once in our supercharged combination. It started out in the low 11s and rose to a leanest point of 12.2. Still safe for a supercharged application, especially given the boost level that we are at and the power level. I'd like to see this thing at 11.8 or 11.7 more than I would like to see it at 12.2, but it makes really good power there, and we had good gas in this. We also had an intercooler on top of the thing being a blow-through combination, which also helps to cool this thing. But now let's take a look and see what happened um, when we ran 8.02 sensors, so we can take a look at that really quickly. So there's going to be a lot of stuff on here, but what we're looking at are, are basically general trends. So the blue are the 802s that we have on the naturally aspirated motor. You can see there's a big variance in individual cylinder air fuels. They range from less than 11 to on one of them all the way up above 15 to 1 air fuel. So naturally aspirated with the dual play manifold, there was a big variation. They tended to get, as I said, we're looking at trends here and not individual things, but it, it, it trended toward them getting much more even at the top of the RPM range. But one thing that we saw when we added boost to the dual plane with the blow through carburetor, it actually improved the situation. Now it didn't cure it altogether. We still had a fairly good size variation in the biggest differences between air fuel between cylinders, but they grouped together most of them much better on the blow through carbureted application than on the, than on the naturally aspirated one, which is good because you're more likely to have a problem with a lean mixture on a supercharged combination or a turbocharged combination than you are on a naturally aspirated combination. But it goes to show you that the dual plane already kind of had distribution problems, as all manifolds do. Single planes also have this problem. You, you have something that's inherent in the design of the manifold that actually boosts kind of made better. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, did we finally answer the question? Does the dual plane intake manifold work on a blow through application? And the answer is yes, it does work. In fact, we show that not only does it work on a Ford or Chevy, obviously on a Dodge and everything else as well, but it also improved the distribution. That's right. We tested it on a Ford supercharged and turbocharged, and we tested it on an LS Chevy, and it worked on both combinations. And on that Chevy application, it actually improved the the cylinder to cylinder air fuel distribution. So not only does it work, it actually made things a little bit better. And I want to address one other problem or one other concern with the dual plane intake manifold. I've been told time and time again that you cannot use a dual plane intake manifold on an EFI application. Obviously, it works carbureted. It works if you put a throttle body injection on it. But guess what? The dual plane also works if you put port injection on it. That's a myth, and that'll be another video for another day. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.